Grace, peace, and mercy to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I have, uh, I love this Old Test or this uh, New Testament epistle reading today. Uh, it's, it's really the focus of, of Grace's message to the children as well. And, and it reminds me that um, I would have to admit that I've done some pretty foolish things in my past. Um, I'll spare you the stories, the details for another day. Um, I'll probably also, well, not probably, I will do some foolish things in my future as well. Hopefully not the same things I did in my past to say that I've learned a little something. Uh, but it would be true for you too. All right, you've done some foolish things. You've thought some foolish things. You've done, and you will do and think some foolish things in your future as well. And so, so today it's a, it's a good spot for us to stop and say uh, we, want, we want wisdom we need God's wisdom. Uh, that we could use our knowledge, that's fine, but, but we need to be able to, uh, to use that knowledge in wise ways. You know, last, last week we began this series and we talked about, uh, talked about trust. And, of course, we're going through this time where we're looking at some, res- you know, some, some resolutions or some goals for the, for the year to come. And last week we focused on this this opportunity that we have to grow in our ability to trust those who are trustworthy, those who, who love us and that we love. And also, even more importantly, that we would grow in our, our power and ability to trust to trust God. Today is a very similar message in that God invites us to have and to, and to grow in wisdom. Notice I didn't say that we would grow smarter, <clears throat> although that would be good. Um, I didn't say that we would grow in our, in our education and pursuing education, although that would be good too. But that God's design and description of wisdom is greater, it's, it's, it's deeper, it's, it's more wonderful. And, and so that's what we seek today. Let me give you just a couple of examples of what God's word says in regards to wisdom. In, in Proverbs 1, 3, I think it is, it says that fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. It's a good place to start. It's a foundation. In fact, some translations actually say that, 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 that the fear of the Lord is a foundation for knowledge. But it's not quite wisdom. Not yet. In fact, our, our reading today, well, in fact, we would know that, that the devil has knowledge of God. The demons have knowledge of God. But what we're seeking today and talking about and focusing on today is wisdom. And, and this is the greatest definition, although it might sound kind of confusing of what does this mean, and so we'll spend more time with it. But in our reading today, uh, verse 30, 1 Corinthians 1 30, God has united you with Christ Jesus for our benefit. God made him to be wisdom itself, that Christ is wisdom The pursuit of Christ is then where we would look to to know him, to to study him, uh, to receive him. Here's wisdom itself. So so what does that all really mean? Let me me give you a couple of examples of of how God works in ways that that we can't quite understand. And we know this is true, right? Uh, God takes foolish things and he makes them the wisest of all. That God takes uh, the weak things and he makes them the most powerful. God takes those that are um, the outcast and, and he draws them in and makes them family. God makes the last first. He makes the, the weak strong. He makes the sick well. He makes the dead alive. Sounds like foolishness, but it's God's great wisdom. But as we pursue this, then, then we would have to step back and take a look at the whole of Scripture. We'd have to take a look at, at how God works and say, wow, there, there's some really foolish stuff there. Right? We might even actually have a conversation with somebody, and we would find ourselves saying things like, you know, this, this God of ours, he created the world in a week. He created the universe in a week, a little less than that, actually. That sounds like foolishness. But here it is, the, the very wisdom of God. Or we'd say, okay, well then God also, he, he destroyed the world completely with a great flood. And, and he saved a, a, a family, a couple of people, a few people, and, and he saved all the animals in a big, huge boat. Well, that sounds like foolishness too. 
But here it is, the, the wisdom of God. Or, or this story about a guy who's running from God, he's fleeing from him. It's this beautiful story about the, the, the people of God and, and how one person's going to be sent to share that with the people of God, but he was rebellious and, and wicked, and God had him swallowed up by a huge fish and then spit back out exactly where he wanted him to be. Well, that sounds like foolishness. But it is, again, the wisdom of God. In fact, as we look at all of those stories, in fact, as we look at all of the Old Testament and New Testament, as we look at all of Scripture, we'd find that, that all of those stories, all of those events, all of those things that happen point to one very thing, one event, one person. Well, we just said it. Points to Jesus, which is wisdom itself. Here's the truth. If we're pursuing wisdom, if we'd want godly wisdom, well, then everything directs us, even the foolish things, seems, seemingly foolish things, direct us right, right to Jesus Christ, right to him and him alone. So, so here I want to share a couple of stories about Jesus that, uh, that you know. They're, they're familiar, right? We understand them. We, we, we seek to understand them. And here is, uh, here is the wisdom of God being proclaimed starts off right at the very beginning of his life, right at the beginning of his life, um, that God broke into his creation. The God of creation, the God of the universe, verse, broke into this world, but he didn't come on a, on a chariot with, with trumpets sounding. He didn't, he didn't come in this great power where every eye and every ear would, it would hear and every eye would see. Instead, instead, God broke into the world. He came to the world as a baby being born to a virgin, into a, a family that had no home, among a, a family, a people that were fleeing for their lives. Now, that, now that's foolish in our minds. But here it is, the wisdom of God, the wisdom of God that he would become human in order to save humankind. Well, here's, here's another example just from last week. Right, last week, uh, Wednesday, was the day of Epiphany. It's, it's the day that the church recognizes uh, that Jesus was revealed, he was discovered by the Magi, the wise men. That's a, a day all around the world. People celebrated or at least acknowledged the Epiphany, that, that, that Jesus would be discovered, revealed by these, by these strange travelers. Uh, know this, this is the craziest thing, that, that Jesus, when he's going to be revealed to the Gentiles, revealed to the world, uh, he didn't reveal himself, show himself to, to the king. He didn't show himself, reveal himself to the high priest or to the leaders of the church. Uh, he didn't reveal himself to the teachers of the law or the Pharisees or the other uh, hierarchy of the church. Instead, he revealed himself to Gentile travelers that didn't belong. They didn't fit. Sounds like foolishness. But here it is, the wisdom of God, that he would be revealed and, and seen and known and, by, by people that don't belong. People that were set aside, set apart. Well, here, here's a great example right from our reading today, in fact. The reading today, the gospel reading today, gives a perfect example of this foolishness. As, as Jesus came and was baptized by John, now, you remember John, right? John the Baptist. We heard the stories. We read the stories just a couple of weeks ago. And John the Baptist is out in the wilderness, and he's, he's calling people to be baptized. But remember what the Bible said about who came to be baptized. It had a word for them. It said the corrupt came to be baptized. And it described the corrupt, at least some of them, as the tax collectors and, and soldiers, it said. These corrupt people were coming who were acknowledging their sin and they were going to be baptized by John, and indeed they were. And now Jesus is coming and he's saying, John, you baptized me. And John's wanting to refuse. You need to baptize me, John said. No, Jesus said no to fulfill all righteousness, to fulfill every step that, the, that God intended, that God the Father intended, I will be baptized. I will step into the shoes, the lives, the, uh, the, the life of every human being, and I would fulfill every, every role, every spot. 
Even, even the repentance of sin. Well, then the story says, well, then the heavens opened up and the Holy Spirit descended like a dove and a voice from heaven said, uh, this is my son who brings me great joy. And the rest of the story is that then John, this great, this great human being that God described as being the greatest among all humans, well, he didn't go down in, in, in that present history as some sort of hero. In fact, he was beheaded. The whole thing just seems like foolishness. And yet here it is, the wisdom of God, that Jesus Christ would fulfill every temptation, every difficulty, every righteousness, and be baptized. Well, that leads us to the, the most foolish thing that the, the world would say, the most foolish thing at all, the most, the most foolish event in all of history. And that is Jesus dying on the cross, that God himself in this human body of Jesus would come and he would die on the cross for the sins of all humankind. Now the world would point to that as the most foolish thing ever, that, that some guy would die and it would be for the sins of all humans. And yet, and yet with eyes of faith, with the true wisdom that God gives, we see Jesus dying on the cross, that God wouldn't send some random sacrifice, that God wouldn't send some other way, that God himself would be the sacrifice for sin. Foolishness. And yet the incredible wisdom of God, Jesus dying on the cross for you and me. Now, I want to read you once again just a, a, a verse or two from our reading for today, 1 Corinthians 1 24 but those but to those God called to salvation both Jew and Gentiles Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God this foolish plan of God is wiser than the wisest of human plans and God's weakness is stronger than the greatest of human strength you see if it, if it was us if, if we were in God's shoes we'd have a whole different kind of plan We'd have a plan that we would describe as, as the wisest of all plans, and it would go something like this, right? We would have this great plan to say, you know, um, just try real hard. And if you try real hard, God is evil, and you'll be uh, taken by God to heaven. Or, or, or maybe this plan, this, this wise plan that, that would say, be a good person. Go to church, do nice things. Uh, give, uh, give and be generous, and, and God's going to see you as good, and, and he's going to take you to be with him in heaven. Or, or, or maybe this one, uh, this great wise plan that says, if God is good, and if he is perfect and holy, of course God is good, and, and he'll take everybody to heaven. That would be our wise plan. And the wisest of human hands is foolishness, and God's foolishness is well, it's greater than the wisest of any human plans. It's more powerful than the most powerful of human strength. And here's, here's God's plan. This foolish plan that's, that's right before us. It's, it's laid right in front of all human beings, right? This, this foolish plan of God that says this. That says, that says he's going to come and be born as a human being. He's going to be born as a human being for you and for me, for us. And that, and that this Jesus is going to reveal himself. He's going to reveal himself to Gentile people, uh, not just a chosen group of people, but he's going to reveal himself to the entire world so that all would come to know him, even those that don't really belong, like you, like me, like us. That Jesus is going to be uh, baptized. In fact, he's going to step into uh, every temptation. He's going to follow every step. He's going to fulfill all righteousness even being baptized by John, so that you would then be invited to baptism, to be joined to Jesus Christ in his life, death, and resurrection. He did this for you and for me, for us. And then this Jesus would go to the cross where he would be the sacrifice for sins. He would be a sacrifice for you and for me and for us. It is the, the wisdom of God it's described as Christ himself. So here in this new year, here in this beginning of the new year, we want wisdom. That's what we say, right? We, we want to be wise. 
And so we look to Jesus. We pray to Jesus. We study and learn about Jesus. We look through the whole of Scripture and and have every story, every event, everything that happened that would point us right back to Jesus, who is wisdom itself. He is wisdom itself for you and for me, for us. 